Howdy everyone, it's Luxball Gaming, and today we're going to be taking a look at a core I used in the Halloween Cup consisting of Greninja and a Golbat. I made this core because I was originally going to run Golbat and found out Greninja was a great pairing, and I was like, this is a perfect core. But of course, I totally forgot about electric types. And I think if you ran this in Open Great League, you might not see as many electric types, but Charchabug is everywhere in this. There's also the occasional Gavantula, and you're even going to see a Vicavolt in one of these battles. Despite the entire team takes damage to electric type damage, I think in the one shields, Greninja can actually beat Charchabug. Of course not in the two shields, the damage will become overwhelming. Charger Bug is of course going to be hard to overcome if the opponent sees the value in their Charger Bug against my team. I was able to gain I think 41 points with this team and went 9 out of 15. 9 wins out of 15 battles. The first set I will admit is pretty disgusting. The first set contained a lot of electric types but I think I started playing better with the team overall. I did make misplays in the first and second battle. Here's the first battle. If I brined here, I would have gotten the shield. And you'll see later, I'm close to reaching another charge move. My opponent smartly knows this is the charge move. They should be no shielding. This foul play is going to take out the gold bat. Another one's going to take out the Toxapex. Unfortunately, if we didn't get that defense drop on the Toxapex, I think we would be in a healthier range to take a foul play. But this foul play takes us out, and I don't have any energy to get rid of the shield and the Umbreon. And they actually had enough for the last resort. So unfortunately, Umbreon sweeps us in the game. Like I said, if I had brined, maybe I actually could have won that game. Next game, we had a great lead, a Salazzle into our Greninja. They switch into a Drapion, which we don't have an exact answer for. So I'm going to Hydro Cannon and plan to farm down with Golbat. They go for a Crunch and get a Defense Drop. So I'm now going to need to shield the next one because it may potentially KO or leave us at a health range where they can farm down. Now, our team is pretty good against Salazzle, so I didn't really need Switch, but I thought the energy would be good, and it would have been if I straight Shadow Balled. I'm putting myself in a worse situation, because they clear the defense drops and they have Vicavolt. This is worse than Charchabug, because Vicavolt deals much more damage, and they have shields to hide behind. Discharge nearly puts us into the red. I throw the Brine. They're most likely going to shield this. Yes, they do. And I'm just trying to find the optimal timing right here. So I'm going to shield this. We're going to do one Water Shuriken and Night Slash. The opponent is going to shield this. And we lose CMP. These are two Glass Cannons. But Vicavolt is going to be the higher attack weighted Pokemon to come out on top. And unfortunately this Salazzle which I think was very easy to deal with with our team is actually going to be able to get the win. Next game, we lead into another Greninja. I am not very sure how to play this out. This I made as an ABB team, so you're eventually going to want to switch out in case they have an answer to poisons. So I tank the first move and then come in with the Golbat. Golbat can take a Hydro Cannon, but it does a lot of damage. So we go for the Poison Fang. It goes unshielded, and I'm thinking I could shield and farm this down. Luckily, my opponent just lets me farm them down. Maybe they thought they could have gotten to another move because they actually have a charger bug in the back. They could have easily gotten the shield and then just switched out. So we at least have a poison fang defense drop applied to the charger bug. They also baited with an X scissor. I don't shield it because we want to save a shield for Greninja. So after brining, they switch out. And I guess they forgot we had a Greninja in the back. Honestly, unfortunately, my opponent is not playing this very well at all. They could have easily come in with a Charger Bug against my Golbat. They threw the wrong move into the Toxapex, and they are just giving up Switch. 
So after Jellicent gets farmed down, we have two Night Slashes for the Charger Bug. I don't need this Night Slash boost, which is the only one I got through these 15 battles, but Night Slash boosted is going to take out this Charger Bug for the win. If you guys are enjoying the video, make sure to leave a like, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. Next battle, we have a Shadow Needle Queen. I go for the Hydro Cannon because this will easily get the one shot. But if they somehow are sacrificing their Nido Queen, like soft losing the matchup, and they call a Night Slash, I'll honestly be pretty embarrassed. So I switch into Golbat to clear the defense drops, and they come in with a Frost Slash. I perfectly over farm and go for the Shadow Ball, and it takes out the Frost Slash. What's even crazier is they had a Carbink. They could have switched the Carbink into our Gold Bat, and there's no way we would have been able to flip switch, even with zero shields. The rock throws just add up too much. The Frost Slash also would have thrived against our Toxapex, because Brine's an awful move, and the Poison type is resisted by Frost Slash. They also catch the Brine here, which is actually better for me, because now the Nidoqueen doesn't have a chance to take out my talk specs. And I'm just going to speed this up because my opponent disconnected here. So that's going to be a good game. Next game, opponent leads with a Scrafty. I'm going to switch out because our poison types will be able to handle Scrafty better than the Greninja. Now I over farm with one wing attack instead of immediately going for the Poison Fang, because if they get hit with a Poison Fang, Poison Fang doesn't have too much damage added to it. So they can easily just switch out and clear the defense drop. So after Scrafty throws a foul play, they come in with their Gold Bat, shield a Shadow Ball, immediately went for the Poison Fang, and get a farm down. The fact that my opponent shields a Shadow Ball is actually very useful because this Hydro Cannon is going to deal much more damage than that Shadow Ball would have. And they could have saved the shield for later in the game. So I switch out and catch the Poison Fang, which I think is good because the Poison Fang would have taken out the Glassy Greninja. I'm running the second best Greninja, but of course no matter what Greninja IV floor you run, it's still going to be Glassy. Mine's just a little less Glassier than the others. Here I was getting greedy with my shields. I was wondering, what if I save my shields for the Greninja? Or what if I even called a power up punch? And they actually did go for the power punch. So now I shield the foul play and they had a zoom roll in the back. Now this game's over. This opponent is still trying to win this game, but they're not going to be able to. They go for the ice beam, kind of just wasting our time. I'm just going to go straight for the sludge wave. Doesn't matter if I timed it well or not for the win. Next game, opponent leads with a Toxicroak. Like I said, our backline answers these fighting types better, so we're just going to immediately switch out. I think my opponent here was slow on the safe switch, and they come in with an Umbreon. With optimal fast move timing, we are going to throw these Poison Fangs, and the damage is going to start adding up, even against the bulky Umbreon. Luckily, they do not have Psychic, so they can't Foul Play and then Psychic to take us out with two moves. They are going to need three charge moves to take us out. So I can survive this next foul play, and I was going to let this go to farm down with the Greninja, and they immediately switch out, which is actually pretty smart because they were triple defense drop. So I instantly come in with my Greninja, and here's where I make a slight misplay. I instantly throw this Hydro Cannon. I should be farming up more energy because I can take more moves on the Drapion because now I don't get a charge move on my Toxicroak, uh, on my Greninja. Despite I lost that charge move, I'm still not in a bad position, but I could have been in a much better position. So they have their Umbreon still and they have the Toxicroak right here. So we're going to want to shield the Mud Bombs because that's going to deal the most damage now on their team. Even if they had Psychic on the Umbreon this time. I switch in the Golbat for either the Wing Attack Snipe or the Catch. In this case, the opponent threw the Mud Bomb on the Toxicroak. And I'm just throwing this Brine just in case I do end up not being able to farm down. And I reach two moves before I get to the farm down. Which can be risky at times because sometimes that one fast move you lost really matters. But 
In that case, we were able to just fast move down their team for the win. Next game, opponent has a wiggly tough. This is the third time our back line handles the lead better than our own lead. So when we switch into Golbat, they come in with a Shadow Gavantula. They shielded our first Poison Fang, and I'm going to see if I can call a lunge here, and which I do. So now I'm able to get to this Poison Fang, but it barely doesn't take out the Gavantula. So even though I was able to call that lunge like a boss, I was so close to winning Switch, but it didn't matter. At least we got shield advantage in the end. After switching out, after immediately throwing in my Greninja, because I should have waited the clock out more, they have a Jellicent. Hard countered. But we have a shield advantage. So I immediately shield this. Luckily, the opponent is not baiting and is just going to go straight for the Shadow Ball. Once again, this is the move we want to shield because the Wigglytuff is not going to deal any damage against our Toxapex. I go for a catch. Unfortunately, it doesn't go successful and they're able to charm us down. But luckily, Wigglytuff didn't get to a move there. So after taking out Wigglytuff, all they have is the Jelsent. Jelsent goes for a third Shadow Ball this game. This Jelsent got so much energy this game. So we just go for the Brine, and I reach the Brine before I go for the fast move farm down. So this Brine takes out the Jellicent. We were hard countered, but in the end, looks like Shield Advantage got us the win. Next game, opponent leads with an Azumarill. Fourth time, our backline is strong against the opponent's lead. They come in with a Wormadam trash form, and this is great to bait out since the confusion is destroying our poison types. So I went for the first shadow ball to get a lot of damage and go for the second shadow ball because it gets the shield or switch advantage, which it actually did get switched. Our opponent then comes in with a scissor. We took out their worm Adam, so now our Greninja is useless. Scissor had X scissor and it almost one shots our Greninja. It's a simultaneous switch into one of the best matchups for us, Toxapex versus Azumarill. I think I go for a play that makes this situation a little bit worse. I went for an undercharge on the sludge wave, and the Azumarill is actually able to get to a move. I also think the poison jab should have KO'd it, but all chip damage matters now. So we're definitely not going to be able to fast move this scissor down. I'm going to... Let the first Night Slash go through in case they boost, but now we're getting risky with their shields. Opponent realized we were going for that catch. We were predictable there on our side. You saw I was over farming there, and now they're trying to fish for Night Slash boost, which I don't blame them because it also adds to their fast move pressure. They didn't get any, and we're at the back-to-back -back brines. Does my opponent have a Night Slash? No, they do not. A bullet punch went through, so this is going to take out the opposing Scizor for the win. Next game, we have another Greninja Mirror lead. I think I play this differently. I immediately switch out instead of banking energy on my own Greninja, and they send in a Carbink. Now I definitely wish I banked some energy on our Greninja, just because we'd be able to immediately go for the Hydro Cannon, and they would basically not have any energy used on the carbink so i try faking the shadow ball here and they actually shield this is the best case scenario because carbink wins the zero shield i'm going to use my shields here they do go for a rock slide bait and then i think they do go for the moon blast right here no 10 percent attack drop to be seen we're able to get the full farm down they come in with their own greninja i think we get the fast move deny there as well Greninja goes for a Water Shuriken instead for the CMP tie. I switch into our Toxapex and we caught a move. Is it the Hydro Cannon? Yes it is. A Hydro Cannon would have most likely taken out our Greninja, so this is a great catch. So they go for a Night Slash, a Water Shuriken, and dip into their Golbat. This isn't a very good situation for our Toxapex, but this Brine is going to allow our Greninja to sweep. Shadow Ball is going to get our Toxapex extremely low. We're able to reach one last brine, so now this puts it into Night Slash range, so we need less energy to take out this Golbat. Poison Fang gets us low. These wing attacks are really adding up. 
we go for the night slash here in case we get a boost not to be seen and two water shurikens does not take out our greninja and we survive on one hp it's incredible how ivs really matter in situations like that next game we lead into a toxapex not a good lead for us necessarily because our fast move is resisted and Night Slash isn't a bad move, especially on an attack weighted Pokemon with Stab. But since Toxapex is extremely bulky, their damage is going to add up more than ours. To make matters worse, they also came in with a Carbink against our Golbat. Unlike the last player, they don't use their shield here. You could also argue that throwing that third Poison Fang was a misplay because you could have actually have not thrown it and gotten more energy on the Greninja. So I'm going to use my shields here. I was thinking of potentially calling a rock slide on the second one, but at least we preserve some health on the Greninja. Now I'm just trying to get some chip damage on this Toxapex, so that way I don't have to go into the boring mirror match. We're two Night Slashes in, and it's still not even into the yellow. They only throw a brine, and our Greninja is in the red, and we finally put their Toxapex into the yellow. They finally commit a shield. I wanted to do one Water Shuriken and switch out, but the game made me do two. Although, it kind of worked out in our favor, because we actually were able to catch a brine. I don't know why they're going for the brine, just because Sludge Wave is the significantly better move. So we're going to go for the Sludge Wave, and my opponent immediately shields it, which is pretty wise, because... It's kind of hard to just immediately bait with a brine at the start of a matchup where two extremely bulky Pokemon are fighting. This Mandibuzz is spamming a lot of charge moves. I tried going for the CMP sack swap, but unfortunately the Mandibuzz was over farming and they're actually going to be able to snarl us down. We even lose CMP to the Mandibuzz. Never would I have seen the day I lost CMP to a Mandibuzz for the loss. Next game, we have another Greninja Mirror. We're going to switch out into our Golbat, and our opponent here is going to throw a charge move for some chip damage. Hydro Cannon does a lot of damage. We're going to go for this Poison Fang, which actually deals very good damage. They switch into a Hisuian Quillfish. I want the defense drop when I send back in my Greninja here. Unfortunately, we are just short of reaching the move. They immediately go for our move, and that gives us a full water shuriken through it, and at least we don't get fast move denied. And they went for a shadow ball, which I should have shielded, because now they go for the aqua tail. So I would have gotten less or more value out of the last shield. I blind hydro cannon, thinking they would come back in with the Greninja, but they come in with an S Cavalier. What's extremely important is they got fast move denied. What if I told you that one fast move my opponent lost is now going to lose them the game? Because that allowed us to get to two charge moves against our Greninja versus their S Cavalier, and they had to give up a shield. Otherwise, they could take the Hydro Cannon on the chin. But we got their first shield, and now our Toxapex was maxed on energy and is going to be able to overwhelm this Greninja. It's going to survive the charge move. And the S Cavalier has no more energy, so they concede the match. We definitely should have lost that game, but miracles like that happen. Final battle, Greninja into Golbat. I kind of wish in one of these situations I went for the Night Slash just to see how much damage it deals, especially if they shield, just because you get more value out of a Night Slash bait for an attack boost chance, and you save 5 energy. So after getting defense dropped, I switch out into our Golbat, and we actually catch the Poison Fang. They switched into an Alolan Nine Tails, and this Poison Fang puts it into the yellow health after one wing attack. And I'm thinking, I'll just farm down with my Toxapex to get some energy on it. I'll wait out my clock in case I want to switch back into my Greninja. They built up to a Psy Shock. Do they actually have it? Yes, they do. That actually hurts. Down goes Alolan Ninetales. Do they send back in the Golbat or reveal their final Pokemon? In comes in Golbat. We go for the Brine. We're going to need another Brine after this to get the knockout. 
Golbat throws a charge move, one fast move away for us reaching the brine. I try calling a bait, and it's the shadow ball. And at this point, I should just lose the game to whatever they have in the back. But it's a Greninja. This has to be the best Pokemon we could see right now. If you could think of a better one, let me know in the comments. We go for the brine straight away, and they weren't even counting. So we get the shield, and now we're going to have enough health and enough energy to be able to take out their Greninja. Not even this Night Slash boost was going to help them. I am just going to shield this because I got the CMP tie because I didn't want to get fast move denied on my Tox effects somehow. And I somehow lose the game. If I were to even crash that game, if somehow I crashed, I still would win that game because their opposing Greninja was at 1 HP and charge moves deal always at least 1 damage. I had a lot of fun with this team. The Tox effects as a closer worked really well. I think this team could perform better if we found a better Pokemon to replace it with. Like I said, Toxapex was great. Maybe there's a better alternative. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. I'm Luxball Gaming. I'll see you in the next video.